I think we can all agree that Free Guy is the surprisingly wholesome hit of the summer. I mean, when you imagine a heartwarming actor, the star of Deadpool and the Hitman's Bodyguard doesn't really jump to mind. His newest blockbuster hit packs all the same punch as Deadpool, but with video game jokes instead of comic book jokes and a surprisingly sweet screenplay. If you need another excuse to go see the film again, there are all sorts of Easter eggs and cameos the movie probably snuck past you. Let's take a look. Sunday should be warm and sunny, just a scattering of drive-bys. Does anyone find it surprising how Disney-fied the final action sequence was? I don't mean like Disney, Princess Disney. I'm talking Marvel, Star Wars will probably buy the entire world one day Disney. The big showdown between Guy and Dude featured Captain America's shield, Hulk's fist, and a lightsaber. Well, the story behind the sequence is that Disney was in the process of purchasing 20th Century Fox while the movie was filming. The filmmakers behind Free Guy asked if they could use any weapons from Disney's vast arsenal. Disney enthusiastically said yes. While any other year I would have found this awesome, after having to sit through Space Jam A New Legacy, I'm starting to worry that all of our big budget movies are just gonna be commercials for other big budget movies. Towards the beginning of the movie, something happened that made me doubt my mutant ability to pick out any celebrity's voice. Yeah, I have that. Uh -oh! When Molotov was getting info from the player in that alley, I knew I could recognize that voice. I leaned over to my friend and gave my guess and she rejected the idea. She said it was ridiculous. Then I got home, I got on IMDB and it was proved I was right. The player was none other than Wolverine himself, Hugh Jackman. Apparently he was able to put aside his totally real and not at all joke feud with Ryan Reynolds to record a quick voiceover role. Ryan Reynolds is a complete and total f If you're not a gamer, you might not be able to tell what game Free Guy is heavily based off of. Anyone who's played GTA Online for more than 10 seconds knows that most of the players are some sort of twisted combination of John Wick's combat skills and the Joker's sense of mercy. I mean that as a compliment, by the way. Free Guy is the closest way of simulating the experience of playing the game for the first time at level zero. While the gameplay is clearly based off the latest Grand Theft Auto, the city itself is based on Liberty City, most popular in GTA 4. Hopefully this movie's critical acclaim can get us that GTA movie that we have been waiting for. Free Guy was full of surprise cameos from actors who clearly wanted to work with Ryan Reynolds. The best of these cameos was Chris Evans, who got angry at Guy for using his Captain America shield. I mean, hey, if you want to get all technical about it, it's Anthony Mackie's Captain America shield now, but whatever. So how did Free Guy manage to score Steve Rogers himself? Well, apparently it was a lot easier than you'd think. Ryan Reynolds evidently wrote Evans a simple email asking if he was interested. Chris managed to, to squeeze in just enough time to film the role in his busy schedule. This seems to be Ryan's superpower, as he was able to score Brad Pitt for Deadpool 2 with just a cup of coffee. When Guy first gets his glasses, his eyes are opened to the great wide world of power-ups, missions, and cool shoes that make you jump like Spider-Man. One item that he saw highlighted was a bottle of gin that was labeled blatant product placement. This is a reference to the aviation gin company Ryan Reynolds is known for making viral videos for. While he sold the company for reportedly a cool 610 million, it's still a great dig at the star's YouTube fame. Clearly, Ryan Reynolds alone is an advertising genius. He's worth the entire cast of Mad Men. Yeah, that's right. Take that, Don Draper. Is there any actor out there cooler than Ryan Reynolds? Yes. Yes, there is. And his name is Dwayne The Rock Johnson. You know, before this, I used to work in an orange juice factory, but I got canned. The Jungle Cruise and Jumanji star is not only just as big a name as Reynolds, but the two have apparently become good friends. The two worked together on the Fast and the Furious spinoff Hobbs and Shaw. Apparently, Johnson and Reynolds became good enough pals that The Rock voiced one of the bank robbers. They recently filmed the Netflix movie Red Notice together, alongside Wonder Woman herself, Gal Gadot, and here I was thinking Free Guy had an all-star cast. Actors are well known for putting on massive amounts of muscle for a film role. Christian Bale famously went from the emaciated Trevor Resnick in The Machinist to freaking Batman in Batman Begins. Even Bale couldn't match up to Ryan Reynolds physically transforming himself for the same movie. Free Guy not only sees Reynolds pack on about 100 pounds of muscle, but apparently a few feet of height too. How was he able to get Hulk sized and then slim back down during filming? Well, he, he, he didn't. CGI was used to take Ryan's face and put it over actor Aaron W. Reed's. That has not kept Reynolds from having a great deal of fun with his due persona online. 
The stash house and free guy is a pivotal sequence in the movie. While the mission that Molotov and Guy go on mostly has generic henchmen for the pair to fight, midway through the scene, an Avenger-style team of gaming archetypes attacks them. You've got your cowboy from Red Dead Redemption 2, your ninja from the likes of Ninja Gaiden, samurai from games like Ghost of Tsushima, and a Viking warrior like one from Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Personally, I'm disappointed that they couldn't have thrown in at least one Italian plumber, huh? Maybe a gorilla with a tie for the pair to fight? Jodie Comer is blowing up right now. Aside from playing Millie Molotov in Free Guy, the Killing Eve star will appear alongside Adam Driver, Matt Damon, and Ben Affleck in The Last Duel later in 2021. The actress's pedigree definitely came into play during the film's marketing. My favorite ad for the movie was the one that featured Comer and Reynolds sitting together. The subtitles beneath Comer's name highlighted all of her various awards and nominations, angering Ryan because he didn't have any. Do, do we need to put the Emmy winner thing there every time? I mean, usually it's just at the beginning. Really though, is a BAFTA award or an Emmy that much better than a Teen Choice Award? You know, maybe don't answer that. Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds are one of the hottest couples in Hollywood. So it's no surprise that Free Guy would pay homage to the star's famous wife and her most infamous role. While Blake Lively is a big Hollywood star today, she got her start on Gossip Girl, where she starred as Serena Vander Woodson. Serena was referenced in Free Guy by a player who used her look as a character skin. If there's one Hollywood actor who has made a lovable presence on YouTube that compares to Ryan Reynolds, it's John Krasinski. The Office star and host of Some Good News was one of the many stars to make a vocal cameo for the film. He was one of the various gamers in the film, though I couldn't really tell you which one. Hopefully he talks about the experience on Some Good News when it inevitably comes back. He just has to finish up with stupid Jack Ryan first. If I asked 99 gamers what the greatest weapon in all of gaming history was, yeah, I'd probably get 99 different answers. And then 99 different debates between those gamers explaining why their choice of weapon was ridiculous. For my money at least, the portal gun from Portal is the coolest weapon I've ever used. Creating two portals that connect to one another across space made for one of the greatest puzzle games ever made. While apparently the makers of Free Guy agreed with me, because the portal gun is the most repeated direct video game reference in the entire film. It's kinda sad that our first big screen adaptation of the portal gun was for a movie that wasn't a portal film. Hmm. Yo, my free city bros, Antoine here. It's a proven fact at this point that every movie is made better with a little Taika Waititi. Free Guy is no exception, with the famed director taken on the film's villain, Antoine. For the film's marketing, Reynolds and YTT remarked how weird it was that they'd never done a movie together. And now to finally have a chance to work together for the first time ever in both of our lives. This is an obvious joke on the fact that they were both in the ill-fated Green Lantern movie Reynolds loves to make fun of. To be honest though, Antoine isn't my favorite y to t role. It just seemed unrealistically evil to me. I mean, when has a video game developer ever lied to his customers, sold a shoddy sequel for profit, bought an indie studio just to gut it, verbally abused his employees, or caused a scene? It's so unrealistic. Celebrities come in all sorts of different forms nowadays. While Free Guy was full of movie star celebrities, it also stacked up plenty of gaming celebrities from YouTube and Twitch. Streamers and personalities like Ninja, Pokemane, Laserbeam, Jacksepticeye, and Dan TDM all appear in the film. I mean, I think Video Game Donkey would have been a better choice for a Ryan Reynolds movie, but that's just me. If there's a modern game known for free-for-all carnage as much as GTA Online, it's Fortnite. The battle royale sensation was clearly a favorite of the makers of Free Guy. The game makes fun of its silly power-ups, dance moves, and Twitch streaming popularity. The most overt reference to the game I found was when Molotov and Guy jumped off of his motorcycle when they were making their escape. Molotov summoned a glider very, very clearly from Fortnite. Apparently, Antoine managed to purchase Epic Games along with Millie's studio. No wonder he's got such an ego. While Free Guy loved to reference video games or name drop them, it didn't really show too many. For the most part, it liked to pretend that Free City was the only game anyone in the world was playing, kind of like Ready Player One. The big exception to that is the Ubisoft game Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which has a brief cameo in the movie. Perhaps bumping into the oppressive barrier at the edge of the game's enormous map is what inspired the barrier that served as the game's big climax. I've always wondered what's beyond those barriers, and now I know. Another game entirely. 
One of the greatest ways man has ever come up with to shoot rocket launchers at your friends in a safe way is the classic Halo series. Clearly, the player versus player carnage that Halo helped to popularize was a big influence on Free Guy. Most notably, the Scorpion tank, which is a staple of the series, drove across Free City alongside the various other tanks and sporting cars cruising along the streets. One of the best lines in the entire movie is when a mother of one of the gamers openly complains about how God clearly doesn't exist because her son still lives at home. While you can't see the mom's face, I knew there was a reason why this delivery was so perfect. That's because she was voiced by the SNL and 30 Rock star, Tina Fey. I already have a drink. Do you think you'd buy me mozzarella sticks? It's no wonder that line got so many laughs from my theater, considering it came from one of the funniest women in Hollywood. Now, I just need a movie starring Ryan Reynolds and Tina Fey in leading roles. That is just an instant classic in the making. Ryan Reynolds, like his character Deadpool, is a proud Canadian. There are many Canadian celebrities out there, but few who have been as successful as the Jeopardy host Alex Trebek. He managed to host the series for 37 wonderful years until pancreatic cancer took him away from the show. His final appearance as the show's host was actually in Free Guy, with him playing himself. It's appropriate that it came out in the same week that Jeopardy announced its new hosts, Maya Bialik and Mike Richards. Of course, it would have been better if they announced LeVar Burton, but they didn't ask me. I'm sure I wasn't the only one shocked when the movie opened up with none other than Channing Tatum as a gamer in Free City. It shocked me because keeping such a big movie star a secret during the film's marketing is such an unusual and refreshing choice nowadays. The more we saw Tatum, the more it was clear that his casting was perfect. Mwah. He's most known for movies like Magic Mike and Step Up that show off his dancing moves. This was the perfect way to make fun of the modern trend of including cheesy dancing emotes in online games. I also loved his name, Revengemin Buttons. Come on, that is a fantastic reference to the very serious film, The Curious Case of Benjamin Buttons. Revengemin Buttons, though, is just so much better. While Free Guy clearly exists in a fictional universe, there are a few references to the real world. One of the biggest was a direct shout out to the famous gaming website IGN. While most movies would make up a new website that would be IGN adjacent, Free Guy actually manages to score the site's logo. So obviously I'm campaigning for Screen Rant to be used in Deadpool 3, come on! I think that Joe Keery is one of the biggest and most surprising success stories to come out of Stranger Things. While Kiri Steve was kind of insufferable in the show's first season, he was the fan favorite by the end of the show's third. So naturally, he was a perfect addition to the free guy as Keys. His apartment is full of cool stuff, but by far the coolest is the neon Pac-Man ghost that I am very jealous of. It's kind of surprising that he didn't have at least one Stranger Things poster, considering the fact that director Sean Levy also worked on the show. I'm sure there was quite a lot of debate about which video game characters should be referenced in Free Guy. While the list could have easily included Mario, Donkey Kong, Sonic, Kirby, Solid Snake, or Master Chief, Free Guy made the strange but awesome choice to make a big reference to the blue bomber himself, Mega Man. In the scene where Guy finally gets to show off his skills from that leveling up montage, he pulls a very familiar blue gun from behind his back. That would be, of course, Mega Man's legendary buster gun. I mean, not to be picky, but it would have been a lot cooler if he charged the shot first, but I guess I'll take what I can get. There are few surprise weapons that were quite as game-changing as Half-Life 2's gravity gun. Oh, my bad, I'm sorry. The zero-point energy field manipulator. It was the perfect way for Valve to show off their revolutionary physics system. So, it was a perfect inclusion into a movie that celebrated gaming as much as Free Guy. I'm just glad that the movie did not include any head crabs. Director Sean Levy has had a varied, successful career with films like Night at the Museum, Date Night, Real Steel, and The Internship. As much as I enjoyed those films, I think Free Guy is likely his best work yet. Well, apparently Ryan Reynolds agreed because he signed on to join Levy's next film, The Atom Project. This film will see Ryan Reynolds playing the titular Atom, who uses time travel to team up with his 13-year-old self. So you won't have to wait for Free Guy 2 to see Reynolds and Levy reunite. This is fine for right now, Disney, but I need Deadpool as soon as humanly possible. Jodie Comer could play the real love of Wade's life, huh? Death herself. Anyone who's seen Killing Eve knows how perfect that casting choice is.